good, YouTube? It's your boy DJ Liftoff with the JP Way, and you don't want to miss this flight. Today, we will be going over two separate things, the auto loop function and cue points. Both of these features or functionalities are great things to be able to use as a beginner DJ, intermediate DJ, or an expert DJ. These can help you transition into songs, transition out of songs. You can use vocals and the auto loop to kind of freak a song, make some cool melodies with a vocal or a beat. You can pretty much do a lot of different things with both of these functionalities, especially the auto loop. So in this video, I like to break it down, show you a very, very quick mix of me using the auto loop function, show you three different ways that you can use it. Also, I'm gonna go over how I personally set my cue points to be able to transition in and out of songs. And without further ado, y'all know me, I don't like to talk too much. Let's get into the video. Yeah, yeah. I mean, where the f should I? I, 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 really even start. I got hoes that I'm keeping in the dark. I got my niggas cross the street living large. Thinking back to the fact that they banned all my raps on the facts that they sat with the bars. I got two phones, one need a charge. Yeah, they twins, I can tell they ass apart. I got big packs coming on the way. I got big stacks coming out to say. I got Lil Max with me, he the way. It's a big gap between us and the game. In the next life, I'm trying to stay paid. When I die, I put my money in the... So there is an example of me using the auto loop function in three different ways. And now let me break down those three different ways that I actually used it. So on most mixers or controllers, you'll have an auto loop function that's unlike the auto loop function on the DJM S9. And when I say that, I mean on this particular controller or this particular mixer, when you hit your auto loop function, it actually automatically goes to a four beat loop. So if you have a different type of mixer or controller, most likely you'll realize that when you hit your auto loop function, and just for the sake of this video, let's pretend this is actually um, my auto loop function button. Usually when you hit it, you can turn it on and off at whatever beat you select. And when I say whatever beat you select, um, I pretty much mean in Serato, um, it might be different in other softwares, I'm not sure, I only use Serato, but here I'm able to select how many beats I want the auto loop to actually function on. So here in this particular example, I had the beat set to one. So if I click this pad that I actually remapped, and I might go over this in a different video, but I actually remapped this last pad to be my auto loop function. So I can turn a one beat function on and I can also turn that off. So like I said, with most controllers and most mixers, it'll be an auto loop function um, just on and off instead of a four beat loop. So I started out this beat or this, this short, very, very short mix with um, a Drake song. And as the song was coming in, I decided to turn on the beat loop on this particular part. Should I, 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 I. Now with that particular part repeating, there's a lot you can do with it. Using your half X and your two X, as you can see in the mix, I decided to hit the half X button to like just play around with the sound a little bit. So there's obviously a lot of different things you can do while it's going. So obviously you can play around with it. If you have another beat going on your other deck, you can play around with it just by hitting that half X and two X button. And then you can see when the beat actually was ready, when I was ready for this beat to actually drop, I just unclicked it and let the beat drop so it was on beat with the other song. So as you can see, there's definitely a lot of different ways you can play around with it. The second way I used it was actually over here on the other side. And what I did was I started the song with the four beat loop already um, activated. So instead of a one beat loop like this, I had it on four beats and I pretty much hit play and I let that just go over and over and over as I prepare to transition into this actual song. I got big stacks coming out to say, got a little max with me, heat away. It's a big gap between us in the game. In the next life, I'm trying to stay paid. When I die, I put my money in. So that's a second way you can use it pretty much as a way to transition into another song, but you can prepare a song um, as long as you need to. So you can go ahead and start it on the beat. 
Um, say I had this song playing here. I got holes that I'm keeping in the dark. I can start it on the one and just let this repeat and repeat until I'm ready to fade it in. So just like that, I kind of had it playing a few times and then once I was ready to bring it in, I just turned off this loop function and then I let the song actually play. The third way I used the loop function was to transition out of a song. So here I'll go back to this same Drake vocal here. Right, kind of like how I did in the mix. Um, or. Even simpler, you could simply go like this. And as you can see right there, instead of actually using the half X to make it go faster and faster, I just used it kind of like it's on a roll or just repeated that ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, put a little bit of reverb on it and I just slowly faded that out. So in that tutorial, that is three different ways that you can use the auto loop function. Those are three different ways that I really like to use it. And now on to part number two, I'm going to go over cue points and how I set my cue points. So first I'm going to load a song um, that makes sense just for me to use in this example. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all my cue points that I have set. And now I'm just going to let you hear the beginning of this song, how it starts. So as you can see, this song starts on a vocal. I don't got no type. And usually when you're DJing, not all the time, but you like to start off on some type of instrumental and then it kind of transitions into a vocal or transitions into the drop of the song. But since I don't have that ability to do that here, I'll show you a workaround and how you can work with that. So um, just to re revert back to the beginning, the first thing I like to do with my cue points is I'll set one at the very, very beginning of the song. So I use this first cue point for the very, very beginning. And then my next three cue points are going to be the actual drop. And then I'll go back four, four beats and then I'll go back eight beats. And uh, by beats, I actually meant bars. So I'll go back four bars and then I'll go back eight bars. So right now I'm just going to fast forward to the actual drop of this song. I think it's about 16 beats in. Um, yes. So here is the actual drop of this song. So what I'm going to do is go right on this drop. I'm going to set my fourth one to the drop. Then I'm going to rewind this back one bar, two bars, three bars, four bars. I'm going to go here. I'm going to set the third cue point to four bars. Then I'm going to go back four more. So one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to set my second one for a eight bar loop. And I like to do it this way because um, you should definitely know your music and what you're transitioning in and out of. Um, sometimes I'll use a 16 bar loop instead of an eight bar loop. But for the, my default, I usually either I'm using eight bars or um, four bars before I go into a song. Now, before I actually show you an example of that, I also like to find a part of a song with an instrumental just so I can kind of use it as an intro. So for this particular song, I know it's at the very, very end um, that has an instrumental portion that I can use as kind of like a filler or use as an intro. I can pretty much do whatever I want with it. And that sounds like this. I'm going to go ahead and set this to my fifth cue point. So as you can see there, I'll set this just so if I wanted to start this song, if I wanted to transition into this song, I wouldn't actually just start it right at um, this one. I would take it here. And then as I get to the drop, I'll either start it at the beginning of the song here or I can just go from here straight into my fourth cue point, which is the beginning of the song. So let me actually show you that in an example. Okay. 
So that's one way I could bring in a transition. As you can see there, I let the instrumental go twice and then I just brought it in right at the drop. Another way I might do it is to actually use the end of the song and then I might actually go into the intro. So here's another way I could do it going into the intro. So as you can see there, even though um, that transition wasn't necessarily something that I would do at a party or I would do at an event, um, I just wanted to show you that I can use the ending or any part that you can find in a song. It doesn't have to necessarily be the end. It could be in the middle. It could be whatever part that you want to use as like a filler before you actually bring in the song. So in this case, it just was an instrumental from the end. I could even use the beat loop, the four beat loop or the eight beat loop here and play this over and over and over fade that in and then once I'm ready to either drop the song or go to the intro I can simply go from this and then drop it or I can go to the intro um so essentially yep so that's how I set up my cue points again I do the first beat of the song then I go to eight bars four bars and then the actual drop of the song as well as one more cue point for any part of the song that I can use as an intro or I can use as just some filler material before I decide to transition into the song. All right, DJs, I hope you all enjoyed these tips as it regards to cue points as well as the auto loop function. Um, as I said, these are both great things that you can use in your DJ repertoire. So definitely continue practicing to use these over and over and over as you get better. Continue to figure out new ways you can use them um, to even expand it farther than I have shown in this video. So if you did enjoy this video and you wanna see some more content, definitely go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications so you know when I am posting and that's about it. Definitely expect some more scratch patterns coming up. Um, just all things tech, man. I look to get into some tech reviews, um, show you all some different boards that I'm using, um, continue with the scratch patterns, all kind of stuff, man. So if you wanna stay, stay tuned with DJ Liftoff, Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hey, I'm up out of here.